Whenever you create designs for web or for mobile, it is good to create interactive prototypes to easily visualize the finished product. In this video, we will look at the prototype panel in Figma. So I want you to import the file sample prototype.fig, which is available on your tutorial assets folder. And see here two um, simple top level frames. Each uh, has a button that is linked to the other frame. Select the bottom group and tap the prototype tab. So that is next to the design tab on the top right. Now you'll see that these um, two frames are connected to each other, as you can see on these arrows here. And with that, we're all synced up. So um, let's just um, click the play button in the top right of the screen here. So what this does is um, it will render your entire file into a new window. And it will show it on our appropriate mobile device framing. And um, just as anticipated, we can uh, now click our newly created button and you get sent to our second screen. So let's um, just click here to get back. And you can also reset your demo at any time with the R key. So feel free to keep this tab open while we work on the original file so that we can jump back and forth as it will always be updated. So back in our design here, there are a few other ways that we can adjust our interactions in more precise detail. We can set interactions between screens more so than just um, simple tamping. With our button selected and back in the prototyping properties, on tap will be our default interaction. But in this dropdown, we can choose to have an interaction triggered simply by hovering over an element or by using an input device like a gamepad when our mouse enters or leaves the element, or a few other technical interactions. On tap will cover most of your needs, but we'll cover some more interesting interaction methods down the road. From here, we can set where our actual interaction will take us. Right now, of course, it's linking to the other frame, but we can treat it to sort of like um, a global back button that will always take users back to the previous screen. Or we can enter an entirely new web address to send them there. We can also adjust the transition type during our interaction. By default, the transition will be instantaneous. But here we can set our screens to fade into each other with the, the dissolve option. Or we can have our new screen push on slide in, move out, and you can see the preview of that transition here. There's a good chunk of variety here, and I suggest you explore to see what's available. Finally, if you don't have any object selected and focus on the prototype tab, we can see some general prototyping properties. We can change orientation and even the visual style of our prototype here can also choose what type of mobile framing we want to encompass the design. In this case, I'm using iPhone 13 Pro Max. We can also adjust which frame our prototyping will start on by dragging this play button. Right now it's set to this frame. And if I click and drag it on the second frame, when you click the play button at the top right, it will start on the second frame. Aside from that, you can also change the background color it displays over. So there you have it, that's the prototype tab. I just want you to be aware what we're using this tab for and what it looks like, but we will have a dedicated video for creating a fully interactive prototype later on in this course.